2021 Kia Telluride or Tilleride. I don't know how to say the hell the name of this car. The air conditioning on this we're about to do. So here's the year. And if our uh, beautiful Apple will do us the favor of uh, focusing. There you go, 2021. And there's the refrigerant, YF, 950 grams. Now if you'll notice, this is a huge condenser. If you look at the size of my arm, we come here, I put my arm all the way, it goes all the way out to here. And here's my shoulder right there. This thing goes past my shoulder to my neck. That's how long that condenser is. Well, look how deep this condenser is. It goes all the way down here. Here's the tip of my arm. That's like 23 inches high or so. That's a huge condenser, very long. And look at the receiver dryer. So there's the receiver dryer. Look how far this thing goes down. It almost makes it all the way down to the bottom and almost makes it all the way to the top. That's a huge receiver. That holds a lot of excess refrigerant for on those really hot days when both the evaporators, because this has two evaporators, it has an evaporator in the rear and the front. This is a massive condenser. Only problem is it is aftermarket. So instead of having the tight 21, 22 fins per inch, 20 fins, it has something like 16 fins per inch. You probably can't see that really good using, uh, but comparing to my fingers, the fins per inch suck on this. Unfortunately, I feel sorry for the condenser, but you know, it's aftermarket condenser and that's what you get when certain insurance companies say it's like OEM and you want to save money on your policy and you choose an insurance company that does that, well, that's what you get. Now, another problem, oh no, it was up here. On this one, what I seen, oh, I don't have the light on. Oh, that sucks. Well, the line, the liquid line to the condenser right here where it goes in the side, it's a little smashed. And uh, I don't think that'll affect it. It's a little kinked. It's not really bad, but it shouldn't be kinked at all. It's on the liquid line. And uh, it's already a hard, tight 90 degrees. And it was hit over here and it was really smashed and tight. And they didn't replace it. Uh, they just covered it up. I caught it right away. I looked down there and I go, oh, that looks smashed down there. And uh, he had a little problem. Uh, the technician said getting that the lineup with the seals and the gaskets and threading it on. But, you know, what happens is happens. Not my call. Uh, okay, so we're going to fill this up here. I got the condenser, uh, the vacuum pump on. And so we got the VP X7, 10 CFM, silicone three-quarter inch hose, four-port manifold, field piece, S-Man, SS, 480V and as you see I beat the hell of it and it's been used for quite a while now so let's turn off the, the vacuum and get ready to fill this up with 950 grams so let's turn on the Bluetooth sync up syncing up Bluetooth to our scale let's zero it out it's zeroed out and I'm going to open up the liquid line going into the liquid side. And we're waiting for 950 grams. One, two, go. So we're filling up now. So now we're just waiting for 950 grams to go in. And as you can see, a dual system SUV, 950 grams, doesn't take long. And yes, it's loud around here because this is a real working shop. All right, let me start cutting it off. Okay, I shut it off. I shut it off a little too soon. On, off, 960, I could live with that out of 950. Plus or minus 25 and I am 10 over, so good to go. And that's all it takes to fill up a system like that. You never have to start them. You don't have to go vapor through the low line, low side. Find the right people to learn the right education to do things profitable, fast, efficient. Because when you're in a high volume shop, you can't do the old Yankee Danky thing with the uh, turning on the engine and shaking and whacking off a can through the vapor side, sucking it in with the engine RPM, revving it up. That 
that is that i'm gonna say that shit gotta go all right guys unless you're a do-it-yourself person in your backyard that's fine but if you're a shop and you guys want to make money and you want to be proficient uh you better learn some other ways and stop uh, doing business with the dinosaurs. If you have somebody who runs a shop and doesn't know how to run your shop efficiently, I'm talking to you, the owners, the managers. If you don't know what you're doing, you're literally stealing money out of the mouths of your employees by not efficiently running a shop. And if you cannot train them yourself, find somebody or send them somewhere to get trained because it all comes down to the shop owner. If the shop owner is uneducated about how to run a shop and that doesn't mean management that literally means the technical stuff too if you can't technically teach your guys or get them trained you are responsible for your losses not your guys it is a combination but if you yourself as the owner can't train them then you're in a world of hurt and so will you be your guys all right see you guys